I've been discovered. At last, after all this time. I've been here at Land Hydrock for more than 350 years. Then, last year, just before Christmas, a man came to find me. He was a tall, slim man, a professor. His name was James Carley. He was so excited he found me that he ran around the gallery six times with whoops of joy. So, you wonder, why was he so excited to find me? Well, you see, this old house in the middle of Cornwall is not where I come from. Understand this. I am the book. I'm the work of my author, a friar called William of Ockham, a most learned man who wore a grey habit befitting of the Grey Friars of London. It was about 1495 that I was bound and fitted with a smart brown leather jacket with an embossed front cover. My pages are made from wood pulp and handwritten in Latin using a quill pen and black ink. Latin is an eloquent and lyrical language that is precise in its meaning and commonly used in English books written in my time. My words and sentences are religious, political and theological and I was written to inform and educate. I am an important book, a work of intelligence and my name is the work of 90 days. So, for 40 years or so, I was read by all sorts of people who turned my pages. And then, one day, I was taken to the Royal Palace of Westminster. It was about 1533. Important people who worked for the King found me and took me there. They used me to help him. King Henry VIII needed me. He wrote on my pages. He marked them with his own initial, an H. He used other marks, such as hashtags and wavy lines, to highlight important sentences and words. He needed me because he wanted to get rid of Catherine, his first wife, so that he could have Anne Boleyn, the love of his life, and make her his queen. The words written on my pages by William helped Henry to seek the divorce he longed for. And thus, together, we changed the course of history forever. I belong to him now. I was royal then, you see, important and useful. I had helped a king, and later I was branded with the number 282 and sent to the library. I was put back on the shelf in the Westminster Library, where I stayed for, well, a hundred years or so. Well, then one day, another man came. Now, his name was Hannibal Gaiman. He wore a long black cape, and around his neck, a ruffled white collar. On his head, he wore a flat black cap. He was a clergyman of the mid-1600s, and he thumbed through my pages and took me away from the Royal Library in a box. I knew not where I was going. I was taken on a long journey all the way from London to Cornwall. It was a long and dangerous ride. The civil war raged across the southwest of England at the time. But eventually we travelled over the Tamar River and on towards the North Cornish coast. We arrived safely at the wreck of St Morgan. Animal owned me now. He wrote his motto and name on my flyleaf. I belonged to him now. I was no longer a royal book, but a clergyman's book. I was a prisoner, kept here against my will. It was a cold and desolate place, far away from the pomp and lively Tudor court of the palace. This was my home now, this draughty, cold, candlelit rectory. From time to time I was aware of the distant sound of music and singing coming from across the valley. Well, I was part of his collection now. I was never to return to the Royal Library. I stayed here at the rectory 
until Hannibal died in 1651. And then another clergyman, Walter Snell, owned me for a short time. Then he passed me on to the master of Land Hydrock House, Lord John Robarts. He took good care of me. This master at Land Hydrock was better for me. I could feel it in my pages. Land Hydrock was a huge and beautiful house surrounded by gardens, woods and fields. Much more like a palace than old boring cold rectory. I was placed on the shelf in the library with 25 old friends who had also been printed before 1501. We were the important ones. Especially, you see, as some of us were actually from royal stock, but nobody seemed to know this. Then, one day, on a windy April afternoon in 1881, a great fire started in the kitchens. The flames enveloped the house, destroying everything I'd come to love. It was pretty terrifying. Many watched the spectacle from a distance. People were running and shouting, Fire! Fire! Buckets of water were hurled over the fire in an attempt to smother the flames, but to little avail. Inside the house, somebody shouted, Throw the books out of the windows and save them! And so it was, we were thrown out of the window. Can you believe that? Old books like us being treated in such a way. Miraculously, none of my pages were torn or damaged. My sturdy brown leather jacket, so nicely embossed, was my protection. I survived. But what was to become of us all? Our library at home had been destroyed by fire. We need not have worried. All of us were to be rehomed in the long gallery room that had survived the fire. The gallery room had been used for people to exercise in on wet cold Cornish days and now it was to be converted into a library. I immediately felt at home. Another old famous book, the Book of Genesis, is depicted in plaster friezes all over the ceiling of the gallery. So everywhere that I looked there were stories, stories told about the creation of our world, the first book of the Bible. This was the rightful place for me. It was my destiny to be here amongst these important books that spoke of powerful, thought-provoking stories. And so now the National Trust is my sixth owner. All the books were inherited in 1953 along with the estate. Here at Land Hydrock, I've been waiting to be discovered. Now, thanks to James Carley, I'm on display for all to see in this special place in the Land Hydrock House. I should have had a very different life, but my life's journey sent me to Cornwall, and I am none the worse for it. I'm the book that 500 years ago belonged to the King of England, Henry VIII, my important royal master, and I helped change the course of history forever and for everyone. And that is my story.